In this video, we're going to break down some clips of Robert Downey Jr. and Charlie Hunnam to highlight four different personality traits you may have that are psychologically attractive to a lot of women. We'll also go through how you can show you have these traits in a way that feels natural rather than try hard or braggy. You don't need every single trait in order to track someone. This video is meant to give you a menu to choose from. Some come through in the stories you tell, others only require one sentence for you to establish. And yes, both these guys are handsome, but the techniques in this video will help anyone to be more attractive regardless of how you look. Also, it's worth noting, these are far from the only ways to be attractive. There are many other traits we can cover in future videos if this turns out to be a topic you're interested in. Okay, so the first trait is best shown through the subtext of a story. To learn how to work the story into conversation, watch how Charlie baits Kristen Bell to ask him to tell his attractive story. Do you like animals? I do. <laughs> do you want to see a picture of my cat? Of course I do! Yeah, I've had him 17 years. I actually saved Legit his life. Legit a picture of your... Wait, what? You saved his life? Oh, I did. Oh, he's very we... cute. Yeah. If it feels like you're forcing an attractive story into conversation, it's going to turn people off. That's why this method of story baiting is so effective. Now watch as he tells the story. And I was going to bed one night and I heard this kitten crying, but it was pouring with rain. And in order to get onto my roof, I used to have to climb onto the garage and the roof was about two feet higher than the garage. So I'd have to run and like Superman style jump over. Notice how he doesn't jump straight into how he saved the cat's life. You shouldn't rush to your punchline. Step one for good storytelling is to set the scene to get people invested in your story. But it was uh, 11 o'clock at night pouring with rain. I said, I'm either going to kill myself or the cat. So I set my alarm for 5 a.m. the next morning because I was so worried about this cat. And the alarm went off and I thought, why am I late for work? And I remembered the cat. Step two after setting the scene is to highlight the emotions you were going through. Storytelling isn't about describing what happened. It's about creating an emotional journey for your listener. Climbed up, no cat up there, went back into the garden, no cat there, climbed up just to check once more, and he was lying, I thought it was a piece of wood, he was lying like this, half submerged in a puddle. Aww. And I picked him up, and my heart broke, I literally just started crying. One other quick tip, if it's a dramatic story, then step three is to tell the story as if it's high stakes. Watch this. He was completely solid, like rigor mortis had set in, and he went, <laughs> and no sound came out. I said, he is alive. So I brought him down and put him under my armpit, trying to warm him, warm him up. up, right? You know the cat survives, he just showed a photo of him, but he still tells the story as if the outcome is unclear. Now this next part is where you actually learn something about Charlie. And I didn't have a car or anything at that point. I was totally broke, but uh, so I ran to the vet and got to the vet. You ran to the vet? Yeah, with the cat. How far away was the vet? Like two miles away, two and a half miles oh. away. With the yeah, cat right. underneath my armpit. You're kidding! And, uh, and then the vet wasn't open because it was six o'clock in the morning. The comedic timing at the end is great, but the most attractive part is the fact that he's a protector. He's willing to run two and a half miles to save a cat he just found. If he'll do that for a random cat, imagine the lengths he would go to to help a loved one. He highlights this trait again a few seconds later when he's not willing to take no for an answer. Two hours later, the, they opened and he's like flopping around. They said he's, he's 100% not gonna make it. And I said, that is an incorrect analysis, my friend. You are gonna give him a shot and put him in an incubator and do anything you can do. You're saving this cat's life. Four hours later, they said he made a complete recovery. Come pick him up. This isn't Charlie's only story that highlights this trait. On other talk shows, he's told stories of facing street hooligans and successfully fending off burglars. That willingness and ability to protect yourself and the people you love is attractive. Now that said, don't worry if you don't have any life experience like that, because this next attractive trait is extremely easy to show and it can be done by anyone. It's being a social leader. You may think demonstrating you're a leader requires being the captain of the football team or CEO of your company, but it's actually much easier than that. It's something you can show just by how you handle a conversation. Robert Downey Jr. is the king of this. There's three ways he demonstrates his social leadership. First, he's willing to be the first person to get playful in an otherwise serious setting. Second, he basically makes himself the director of any situation he's in. Feel free to get Joe on camera at once. Get in here. Hey. Get up. Oh, What's your name? Ashley. You want to hug me? Come here. Please, can I hug you? It's just been a, a great job, and we've all made good friends and stuff. You know, you can yeah. yeah, clap. You may not feel comfortable being that assertive, and if that's the case, there's an even easier thing you can do to be a social leader. Take the focus of the conversation and then direct it to someone who hasn't had it. For example, watch Robert make sure to bring Robin in during his conversation with Howard Stern. He's the guy who's busy archiving films 
and he has he's a whole archived of, my dad's films. And by right. the way, I appreciate his point of view. Robin, what do you think? Well, it's he's commenting on it. You're leading the conversation because you're directing the focus. And because you're redirecting that focus to other people, especially people who haven't been able to grab it for themselves, you look better than if you were always shining the spotlight on yourself. Here's another quick example. In this next interview, Robert, Tom, and Paul had been doing almost all of the talking. So watch what Robert does when Jimmy asks Tom yet another question. Does Robert give you guidance? He is I mean, in the not, not anymore. I mean, look, he's clearly his own man now. He doesn't need... <laughs> I don't want to be bitter about it. You know what? I want to. I want to pivot on this. What can you tell us about Avatar? Um. <laughs> and then Zoe got to talk for the first time. This method of being a social leader works for both introverts and extroverts, since you don't have to keep the spotlight of the conversation on you. Here's one more example. Have the kids cut into the? <laughs> Glad we got that in. <laughs> what do you great, think, Ruffalo? Great, great. Ruffalo, are the kids cutting into the fun? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. The next attractive trait you can highlight about yourself, if you have it, is being a successful risk taker. This is another one that's best shown through storytelling. Let's look at another example with Charlie Hunnam. First, notice how he again uses the bait method to set himself up for a potential story. For context, Kristen just asked if he really rides a motorcycle or if it was just for the show Sons of Anarchy. I rode everywhere at 100 miles an hour everywhere really? I went. And after uh, after seven years, I realized, you know what? You really got away with a lot. I mean, I, I had Were a... you dangerous? Uh, yeah, I was. <laughs> but you know, it's so funny. I, the... <laughs> Only once he sees that her attention is hooked does he dive into the story. It's the story of the one time in his life that he thought riding a motorcycle might get him killed. I came over to get onto the exit because I was one stop away from where I was getting off the freeway. And this uh, brand new giant white Lexus comes barreling on into where I was, like really aggressively towards me. And I looked over at the car and there was nobody in the driver's seat. Did you notice that big pause? He purposely waits a second before revealing all the details. This is a great trick to steal for high stakes storytelling. The lady that was driving it had dropped her mobile phone oh. and was bending over to pick it up. And there were two bikes, I mean, two cars in front of me pinched in so I couldn't get by and an SUV here. And I thought if she hits me and I hit this SUV, yeah, it is it's game over. over. Yeah, Amigos. that's a wrap. And again, you see he's emphasizing the danger in the story. You know he survived, but telling it in this way draws people in. What do you do in this situation? So I went, BAM! And slammed my bike into her car. And I looked down, I mean, I felt, and I said, oh dear, I, I've just ripped my foot off. And I looked down, and thankfully my foot was still there, but the peg was not. Being a successful risk taker isn't necessarily attractive to 100% of women because nothing is, but it's attractive to a good number of them. For some, it's because being a successful risk taker shows strength and a certain level of ability. For others, it's because it shows you have the confidence to bet on yourself to succeed when most people would be too scared and others just find the danger of it exciting. Now, thankfully, most of us aren't riding 100 miles an hour on a motorcycle getting into collisions, so you may not have a story like that to tell. But being a successful risk taker doesn't have to mean you've taken life-threatening risk. It can be something like quitting a boring, stable job to pursue your dream career, moving abroad by yourself, or having the courage to perform on stage. Any story where you had confidence to successfully bet on yourself is going to be attractive. Now that said, the point of the story can't be to highlight your best traits or it'll come off as braggy. You need to demonstrate them subtly as you tell a genuinely interesting story. If you don't have confidence in your ability to tell a good story, you may like the storytelling module from our program Charisma University, which I'll link to at the end of this video. Now, if you're really struggling to think of times you took a successful risk, there's another easy way to display confidence in conversation. Be playfully cocky. Here's an example from RDJ after getting asked a question at an Avengers press conference. <clears throat> I must be mellowing with age, but I want to say this very clearly. The next time I'm not asked the first question, <laughs> walk out. We all know confidence is attractive, but arrogance is not. Being playfully cocky can build the attraction of being confident while softening the risk of being arrogant. That said, some women will love this type of personality and others will not, so do it if it seems fun or if it suits you, but don't force it if this isn't your style. Robert Downey Jr. does two important things that help this go well. One, he goes so over the top with it that you can't possibly mistake it as serious. Watch this award acceptance speech to see what I mean. I don't have anybody to thank. I'm sorry, everyone's been so gratuitous. It was a collaboration. We all did this together. Certainly not going to thank Warner Brothers, Alan Horn, and my God, robbing off these guys. They needed me. Avatar was going to take us to the cleaners, but they didn't have me. We didn't have a shot, buddy. 
And if that's not obvious enough, he follows it up with jokes like this to let you know he's not actually taking himself that seriously. What am I gonna do? Thank Joel Silver, the guy who's only restarted my career 12 times since I began in 25 years ago. I mean, I really don't want to thank my wife because I could be busting tables at the Daily Grill right now if not for her. Here's one more example of Robert being playfully cocky, this time at the start of an interview. I am so getting wardrobe credits on Iron Man 4. Um, uh -huh. You're getting all this, right? Last question. <laughs> <laughs> a big laugh and a playful smack is a great sign that you're doing this well. Now, whether it's telling stories with a flattering subtext or being playfully cocky, your biggest concern watching this is probably a fear that you're going to come off as arrogant. And it's definitely a fair concern. These tips are only meant to be part of the conversation, not 100% of it. Robert is playfully cocky, but he's also quick to compliment others. Watch this. But I gotta say, recently, I thought that Thor Ragnarok was so mind-blowing. This Taika Waititi guy, to me, is just, he's, a, he's an assassin. He is so brilliant. That the standout nonsense player lately has been Hemsworth. I, I think without Doctor Strange, we wouldn't be able to have uh, Infinity War, most definitely. And we've already talked about how Charlie Hunnam tells stories that have flattering subtext after he baits the person into asking for it, but there's another thing he does. He mixes in stories where he's not always the winner. Also, another storytelling trick, listen to the hook he uses to start this story. For context, Kristen just asked him if he went to any school dances growing up. Uh, and I only went to one because it was the greatest uh, two weeks of my life leading into the worst day of my life. Similar to the bait method, Charlie hooks by making a statement that's high stakes but vague enough not to spoil the story. The most popular girl in our school, Rachel Gould, and she asked me to be her prom date or her school disco date and two weeks before. And so I just was made up. I was on cloud nine. Yeah. And, uh, you know, was sort of planning the rest of our lives and, you know. <laughs> One thing you probably noticed, even when you know the story is going to end terribly for him, he still tells it in an attractive way. Speak slowly, not using filler words, good eye contact. This will give people the impression that even though a story didn't work out for you, you aren't embarrassed about it. And then the day before, she told me she was only joking. Oh. And she went with Sebastian Lipiat instead. <laughs> Stories like that might not do much to help you build attraction by themselves, but if you mix them in with the rest of the tips from this video, it will help you make an attractive impression by showing that you're confident enough to do more than just share your victories. You can laugh at yourself and admit you have embarrassing stories from your past, which softens that potential risk of appearing arrogant. Now, like I said before, if you want to improve your storytelling, you should check out our program, Charisma University. It's a step-by-step -step program for building your confidence and charisma as quickly as possible, and has an entire module dedicated to making you a captivating storyteller. Over 6,000 people have joined the program so far. Here's what just a few of them have had to say. First, life-changing. In six weeks, I went from being socially awkward with few friends to the life of every event I attend. I also went from having serious girl problems to dating the girl of my dreams. Charisma University transformed me from a lonely introvert hoping to better connect with people to an energy-filled extrovert who makes new friends everywhere I go. Another member wrote, my biggest breakthrough has been gaining more confidence. If you knew me a year ago, you'd see a socially awkward guy, but that same guy had hidden confidence and charisma that has now been unleashed. If you're reading this or listening right now, think about who you want to be in a year. This course will teach you how to be that person. And this last one comes from another guy who says CU helped his dating life. He says, firstly, loving the course. I cherry picked a few things, for example, the filter lesson in the conversation module. This one lesson completely changed my life. I've liked a girl for over a year now, but never thought much of it because I thought she was too pretty. Took your lessons, gave things a shot, and now we're dating. The program comes with a 60-day money-back guarantee, which is for any reason whatsoever. It's a 60-day guarantee even though the course is 30 days, just so there's absolutely no risk on your part at all. Either you become confident and charismatic, or you get every penny back. If this interests you and you want to unlock your charisma and confidence, then click the link on screen now or in the description below and you can learn more about Charisma University. Either way, I hope you liked this video. Thank you to our video editing team of Therese, Andre, and Ivan for all the hard work editing it. Thank you so much for watching it, and hopefully we'll see you in the next one.